we are nearly what a year yeah coming up a, couple a weeks. year into the pandemic we did not anticipate being here at this point in time yet we are all continuing on with the restrictions and trying to live with this virus and that includes our relis religious organizations as well with us now is rabbi jennifer kalusni she is with temple israel so great to have you back with us how are you I'm great, thank you. Thank you for having me again. I think the last time we had you on, uh, your husband was working from home and your kids yes. were remote learning. Is that still the case? Mm -hmm. So my husband is assistant city attorney in Royal Oak and they have him coming back in person twice a week. Um, I have one daughter who's in person and my son is in third grade in the dining room right now. <laughs> Um, we're in Bloomfield Hills and they decided we're going back full days April 5th and he's really excited to go back. Hey, Rabbi, what is it about our kitchen tables, right? I even have an office, but I still find myself setting up shop on the kitchen table. Oh, it's because it's the hub, right? Everybody goes through and everybody, you know, you get a snack, you say hello, you do some work and you keep going. <laughs> I agree, 100%. Exactly, and you're closer to the refrigerator. Uh, with that, but it, it's great to have you again. Um, you. If we can just kind of do a check-in, how are you doing uh, during all of this? Well, thank you for asking. Um, you know, I, 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 can't, I have a hard time believing we're a year in, like you just said. Um, my kid's last day of school was March 12th. Uh, the last time that I was in my sanctuary with my colleagues was March 13th. Um, since then, we have been doing life cycle events, but only um, one of us at a time, really, or one rabbi, one cantor, my musical counterpart, and we are very far apart wearing masks. Um, so I have to say, as a mom, as a rabbi, I'm, I'm very proud of how we've gotten through it. Um, I think we've done incredible things um, at Temple Israel as a Jewish community to keep our community together, to um, focus on mental health, to take care of our seniors, to keep people um, connected Jewishly um, every Friday night for Shabbat and then with holidays and programming. Um, as a mom, you know, I've been trying to keep my, my kids going and they've been incredibly resilient but we've definitely had our times. We've been very risk averse in our house. We don't do play dates. You know, we don't have people coming in and out. And so thank God they love each other and love playing together. <laughs> so that's that's a huge bonus and I'm so grateful for that. Um, but you know, it, it's been hard. We miss people. We miss having people in our home. I always tell everyone, Rabbi, um, when we get past this, watch out. I'm hugging everyone. If you're standing oh, yeah. in line at me, in front of me <laughs> at Starbucks, uh -oh. I'm giving you a hug. If you're behind oh, me same. in Target, I'm giving you a hug. <laughs> like I watch miss out. people. Yes, that's, and that's just it. It's people. It's having people in our home. We love filling our home with friends and with family and celebrating holidays together, which we cannot do and are not doing. And I agree, I love hugging people. It's that, it's the connection, right? It's that physical connection that, that we really miss. For me, it's not even um, so much my family. I mean, I'm lucky because we have a small, I'm from a very large family, but we have a very small family here in Michigan, but it's strangers. Like I get energy and I feel their stories and I love stories i love stories of strangers and and talking to strangers and that kind of fuels my energy and so you miss that a lot absolutely absolutely i i agree i love i love people and i know that may sound very cliche but i build my life out of people and i always feel very honored when i hear their stories and you know some of the stories have been incredibly triumphant what people have overcome and what people have come through and, you know, especially as a rabbi, I've seen a lot of the grief, um, a lot of the tragedy, a lot of the tragedy of being separated um, from people that you love. And as Jews, when someone passes away, we spend a tremendous amount of time very close together after someone passes away. And we really haven't been able to have our rituals around mourning. And so those stories, I've, I've even tried to listen to more intensely and do more follow-up with our families because those pieces are missing. 
So it's been difficult. Uh, but as we go into Passover, mm -hmm. how are you trying to adapt for Passover 2021? So Passover came fast and furious last year, right after we were on lockdown. And we did, um, each of us had a piece and we created a Seder that people could basically just press a link and join us um, because we were all in our homes. So we had to create a Seder with our cell phones. Um, this year, what, now that everyone is a little more Zoom savvy, we're going to have people Zoom into our homes and they can come in and basically be around our virtual table. And we're gonna do it live, um, all of the rabbis and cantors. There are eight of us. And then we're going to rebroadcast it because I have little ones, so we're doing Seder uh, earlier, but there are definitely people who wanna do Seder at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. So again, if they wanna join us for Seder, we're gonna rebroadcast it um, on the first night of Seder so they can watch later. And on the second night, we're going to have a second Seder, but the Jewish uh, community, uh, nationwide community, is actually doing a superstar Seder with the biggest names in Jewish music are all getting together to create an incredible Seder with the best music, best music ever. Uh, so with that, um, it, it really is this new world is kind of opening us up to new people and new experiences, but just in a different way. Right. But for those not of the Jewish faith, can you explain to us the importance of Passover and your faith? Absolutely. So Passover is the holiday where we celebrate the Jewish people going from slavery in Egypt to freedom. And this is kind of our core story. We actually just finished kind of reading through it in the book of Exodus and our yearly reading of the Torah, the five books of Moses. And this story, we are commanded to tell our children to pass this story down from generation to generation. And on the night of our seders, it's a, it's a meal, a communal meal. Um, we tell the story in a certain order. Um, seder actually seder in Hebrew means order. And so we go through the different steps of the seder and all of it is to recount the story because God says, we all need to see ourselves as if we too had left the land of Egypt. So it's also a very personal experience as we tell the story. It's a beautiful story. And uh, just as a reminder to everyone out there, you're listening to 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. Um, and, and, and with that, um, is it all going to be virtual again this year? We are, we're doing um, chocolate Seder for families. We are having our caterer uh, do all the catering that she would always do. I was listening to your uh, guest before this and you know, we have a caterer at Temple Israel and it's been really difficult because we haven't had parties and Sabbath dinners and all of the other things. And she's an incredible caterer. So she is still offering her food. So when people pick it up, the rabbis will be there to say a hello and be able to see people because everything is virtual. We are following CDC guidelines, following the governor's guidelines. We also have a medical team that's been advising us on how many people is safe to have in our sanctuary. And we just recently opened up to extremely small family dinners. Um, and, and we seat people by household. And, you know, he's talking about these big ballrooms. We have a very large reception room and we too are doing the same thing, having extremely small meals in extremely big places. But now that the weather is getting better, we're hoping to, we had a tent last year, we're hoping to put up a lot of tents and uh, get back outside as soon as we can. And like I said, 
as we follow our medical team, the CDC and the governor, we're hoping to open up too, but we're gonna do it slowly and safely, but it's not gonna be in time for Passover, which is in just a couple weeks. I've been so lucky to be at a couple of events at your um, at your congregation there. It, it, it's a beautiful building. Thank it you. really is. Um, but uh, as we're going forward, we try to look at the positive in some of these things mm -hmm. that we've experienced and we miss people and we miss that sense of community but what do you think is going to be the positive mm -hmm. for you and members of your temple coming out of this pandemic? Well, I think there I think there are actually many. We've tried to look at what's what's happened as an opportunity as opposed to a challenge. We try to look at it as both. And one of the ones is pretty obvious by doing things virtually, we've had a huge increase in people joining book book reviews, in joining attend, um, our introduction to Judaism class. We've had people from all over the country coming to our services. We have people who are going to Shabbat, going to Sabbath services together, because even if they're in California and Chicago and New York and Florida, they're all in the same service. Um, we have all, all the rabbis are working really hard to learn more technology because we feel that going forward, we want to keep that inclusion going. We want to have, of course, being together in person, but we want to keep those people who love Temple Israel, who maybe don't live here anymore, or have family members here. I'm sorry, that's my landline. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one with a landline, by the way, because people laugh landline. at me. <laughs> I'm at 11 too, right? it's also at 11. So. Hopefully someone will grab that. Um, so we wanna actually keep that going so we can keep families who live all over the country and all over the world, actually, together. I just did a program doing um, the Sabbath blessings with a group and we had people from Argentina, Israel, Mexico, and all over the United States together. So we want to keep that momentum going as we still return to our building and do things in person. Uh, Jennifer uh, Kaluzny with us. She's a rabbi over at Temple Israel, right here in our own backyards in West Bloomfield. Uh, if we can talk a little bit about the vaccine, mm -hmm. um, and so many people are looking at it as hope from mm -hmm. a religious standpoint, and also members of your temple, are you offering it? Where do things stand in that regard? So Temple Israel, we've been so proud of our um, testing site. We're actually a, a drive-through testing site and have been for quite some time. You can get COVID tested, strep tested as well. So we've been doing that for a long time. We are hoping to become a vaccination site and we are working on that now because we love being a community partner and we want to be able to bring that to our community safely at Temple Israel. Um, as Jews, we are not allowed to deny ourselves medical treatment. We believe that our bodies are gifts from God. They are the vehicle for our souls. And because of that, we have a mandate to take care of our bodies. So getting this vaccine is a way that we not only take care of ourselves as mandated, but we take care of our community. As Jews, like I said, we do most things in a group. Um, we, we even have some things where you're supposed to have 10 people together, um, minimum. And so for us in the Jewish community, the, the vaccination is, is a given. We want to make sure that, that everyone has access to the vaccine, and we want to be a part of that in any way we can. Rabbi, and we've all learned community is mm -hmm. so important right now, more so than ever, even mm -hmm. when we can't be together in person. But with that, I think the most important question, have you conquered the new math? Um, I, you know, as a new, sure as a mom, are you talking about my my son? Yeah, yeah, teaching it, no. teaching at home. No. It's like I'm like, uh, can we just go back to the old math? I can't get it. I just can't I, get I it. Either. They do everything horizontally. I do everything vertically, and it doesn't work. And that is a hard no. Nope, I haven't. Mm -hmm. So how's that been with you? Uh, luckily, my husband is like the math side. And even though he's he's an incredible writer, I'm more like the writing literature side. So between the two of us, thank God, we've gotten them through. Uh, but I have to say math, 
you know, becoming a rabbi, very little math. And that was a really, really exciting thing for me to get rid of math. We are all like, uh, is, is parent, I'm not a parent, but I remember when my nephew was going through it and luckily my brother-in-law, he is a math teacher. Mm-hmm. So we could have him, like he had to tutor him every week because we're like, what is this you're teaching? And so many parents right now, we grew up on the old math and Curse. cursive writing. Exactly. At least they're yeah, bringing back cursive, cursive writing. Sure. But yes, still, yes, I it's, love it's that. Time. My son's cursive it's is time. beautiful. I'm so glad about that. Right? If we had to learn cursive writing, you need to learn cursive writing. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, Rabbi, it's so beautiful having you with us. We so appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I wish you all good health. Please God vaccination very soon and that we're back together very soon. Oh, we all would look forward to that. Um, But also thank you for your time and your commitment to our community as well. It's much appreciated. My pleasure. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you so much.